Hi, I'm Dr. Ellen Stofan, also known as Dr. E. And I'm Thomas Serbok, and also known as Dr. Z. And we're here for another episode of EZ Science. Today, we're at the Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia, which is the other part of the National Air and Space Museum. And this is one of my favorite places because we have things like the Space Shuttle Discovery. But we also have this exhibit, which has one of my favorite Mars landers. Thomas, do you know which lander this is? Yeah, it's Sojourner. You know, I remember it from the Martian. Pathfinder, with the little Sojourner rover, landed in 1997 on the surface of Mars. This stuff you see laying around the ground here is actually an airbag that helped it land safely on the surface. It literally landed like a bouncing ball. The airbag deflated, and then it could deploy the solar panels, and then this little Sojourner rover could come out and down onto the surface. The most exciting part, right, is to actually land there with something that can roll off. So this robotic mobility really set a path, literally with Pathfinder and Sojourner, to how we explore Mars today. It was followed by the Spirit and Opportunity rover and the Curiosity rover, because we realized to really explore the geology of Mars, we needed to get out there and move around. Just landing in one spot wasn't good enough. What's so amazing to me is how light it is. It's only 23 pounds, this entire vehicle. Yeah, and actually this mission really gave us some breakthrough science about Mars. We had known from orbital data that Mars had these huge channels carved into it that we thought were carved by water. But Pathfinder and the Sojourner rover uh, really gave us the first evidence that the rocks at the surface showed a lot of signs of having been laid down and modified by water. That gives you the knowledge that it wasn't just an instant in time of water that the water had to have persisted for tens of millions of years, if not hundreds of millions of years. And of course, it's that very insight that really has clarified many of the historic questions about Mars. You know, how three and a half billion years ago did it become so different than yeah. uh, the Earth? We're making a mission ready right now uh, from 23 pounds or so of a rower to a little bit under 2,500 pounds, uh, Mars 2020. To me, 2020 is really this important next step where Pathfinder and Sojourner, Spirit and Opportunity, Curiosity, we're trying to answer the question, could Mars have been habitable? Were there environments on the surface in which life could have evolved? We know the answer to that question because of all the work we've done with these previous missions. The answer to that question is yes. We know that we're working new land at Chesero Crater. It's basically a river delta next to some craters right, an ancient river delta. That's a place we would want to be if we would want to look for extinct life, if there's such a thing. Mars 2020 is really pushing that issue of can we find evidence of past life on Mars? That's right, that's why the instrumentation is way more complex than pretty much any of the other instruments that we've uh, had there. For example, we have ways to really analyze in much more detail, even the morphology, the looks of samples before we put them in the sample flask, hopefully to bring them back later on. So if it launches in July of 2020, when does it actually get to Mars? And when will we start seeing that first data after the landing? It's gonna be there in February of the next year, 21, coming down. And uh, pretty much within days, we'll get the first data. What I'm really excited about is during entry, descent, and landing, we have way more cameras than we've ever had. We're gonna see it go down. And we're gonna see the look up too. And of course, we're also bringing a small helicopter. Sojourner was record-breaking in its time, this little rover that was gonna explore Mars. Now you're moving beyond surface exploration into aerial exploration with the helicopter technology demonstration. Exactly right. Close to 500 years after the death of Leonardo da Vinci, who actually made the first drawing of a helicopter, we're gonna bring such a vehicle to a distant world. It will be the first controlled flight in a distant world. And because 2020 is so much heavier than Pathfinder here, we really have to use a much more complicated landing system. So retro rockets fire, parachutes come out to slow it down as it enters the atmosphere, but then the spacecraft is actually lowered to the surface on what's called the sky crane. And it's what uh, the folks out of JPL have termed seven minutes of terror as it starts from the top of the atmosphere all the way to the surface. Exactly right. It's a very tough time to sit there until you hear from the surface that I'm okay. Uh, risky time. It's 50% uh, 
or so likelihood of success statistically for humanity to land or go to Mars. Well, especially this summer, we're going to come back to you on Easy Science and talk more about Mars 2020 as we get close to the launch. Yeah, really appreciate that. What an exciting exhibit, an exhibit that points forward to something that's going to happen. Thank you so much only for this discussion. And thanks for coming and joining us on another episode of Easy Science.